how to voiceover or how to become a voiceover talent. That's our topic for today. Good morning. Bill Deweese coming to you live from the closet of the guest room of my home. My dog's giving you a greeting. This just gives you a little idea what I'm what I'm dealing with, competing with right now. We're in the morning with uh, a full paint of the inside of the house, and today the paint, including painting, kitchen cabinets, and bookshelf, built-in shelves that are in my wife's office, and so the the crews, you know, they're working on that. And then today the carpet layers, and I think the carpet folks just came in. They'll be installing carpet in the basement, and then from here. We next, the backsplash gets replaced in the kitchen, new countertops, and then redoing the flooring on the main floor. So we still, man, there's a, there's a lot going on. So you're going to hear noise, um, but that's just, you know, part and parcel of being a work at home voiceover talent. Yeah. The topic is uh, how to become a voiceover talent. And it's, it's really more accurately, it's what to do to become a voiceover talent. A how to would literally take at least a two full day workshop. But how to become a voiceover talent was just too many words to fit on a piece of painter's tape on my cup. So today what I want to do is give you an outline of, you know, we'll consider it the map, the roadmap of how you become a voiceover talent. And the reason I wanted to talk about that this morning is because I'm keenly aware that a lot of you who are coming in and joining us on the live stream are newer at this and you feel a bit uh, disoriented and lost and want to know you need a path to follow. And so, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the four, these are like the four steps, the four things. And, uh, again, it's not, the how-to would take hours to go into, and that's something better dealt with in my VoiceOver Blueprint program. Link to that in the description below. But this will at least give you a bird's-eye view, the 30,000-foot view, so you can see where you go next, and then from there, and then from there, and then from there. All right, so here we go. Number one. You've got to set up a place to record, just like I'm here in my closet. So you need to set up a home studio. Um, I haven't worked outside of my studio. I haven't had to go into a studio someplace else in I don't know how many, maybe six years, maybe six years. So 99.9% .9 of all the work, maybe 99.999% of all the work, voiceover work that's done is typically done from home. Now, if you live in Los Angeles, this might be a little different. You might do some more work in studio, but you've got to be set up to work from home. And the great thing is it's, it doesn't take a, a ginormous financial investment. Literally, I started my, my first home studio was $300. Don't let anybody talk you into spending thousands and thousands of dollars when you first get started because you're really, it's not necessary to do that. But you do need a home studio, someplace that's quiet and acoustically well-treated. Number two, you're going you're gonna to need a Sherpa, a guide, a coach, somebody to help you along the way. And, and let me give you this piece of advice. Um, this is not just coming from somebody who coaches, but comes from somebody who once started at the very beginning, like many of you are right now. Find somebody who's actually doing this for a living. That if, if I had it to do over again, and maybe that's a topic for another video, I would have found somebody who was already successful in voiceover. I would not have gone to somebody who was an agent or all they did was coach. I, want, I would want to work with somebody who is making it work now, who understood how this business actually works today, in this year, in this time, in this era, in this gig economy, not 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, so make sure if you're going to get coaching, get it from somebody who's actually doing it and doing it at a high level and doing it successfully. And again, I do have a link below uh, in, in the description about my program. Okay. Then once you get your coach, you're going to need a demo. You need something to show people what you're capable of doing. Now, back in the day, speaking of, you know, the bygone days, you would have had to, uh, you know, do a, a high-end, super expensive voiceover demo. And someday you're going to want to do that because the better your demo, the higher level that you can, get, you can compete at. But when you first get started, to, in, in the gig economy, there's a lot of freelance websites out there, many of which are free. Uh, and... Uh, you know, you need something, you have to, on your profile, you need something to show what you're capable of. And so what I coach my students to do who are just getting started, and if they don't have the money, because it can be several thousand dollars, you know, to, to get your demo, to get up and rolling, is to self-produce, do a DIY demo. And I've got, I've got videos in this channel. I've got over, I've got like 1,200 videos on this channel that talk more in depth about all this stuff. So you can record your own samples, 
your initial DIY demo to get you started so you can start making some money. Will it be at the higher end of the spectrum? Nah, most likely no. You know, it's entry level work because, because when you're first getting started and you are entry level, that's what you do and you work your way up from there. And then fourth and finally, marketing yourself. The good news is this, there are lots of content creators out there. There's over 43,000 video production companies in the U.S. alone. And voiceover is a global business, which means you can get work anywhere. I do. I do it on a daily basis. I work for clients all over the world. There's a demand for, for you know, English speakers in all different languages all over the place. And so you will never run out of prospective clients. Now, the bad news is they won't beat a path to your door. So you have to beat a path to their door to allow them to hear what you're capable of doing. And if you have a systematic, professional way of doing that on a consistent basis, it will open up doors of opportunity. So again, there, there are four things that you need to do to get started in voiceover. You need to have a place set up in your home to record. You're going to need some guidance, some coaching. You're going to need a demo. When you first get started, again, it can be DIY demo. That's fine. But you're going to need something to show what you're capable of doing. And finally, you will have to learn to market. And uh, if you can do those things, execute those four things, then opportunities will open up and you can build a work-from-home voiceover business. And it's the best. You know, it's allowed um, my wife and I and my family, of course, my, my kids are all grown now, but it's, it's, it's opened up so many doors of opportunity, one of which was for my wife and I to, to move back and buy this awesome house just three doors down from my daughter and my three grandkids. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a real, it's a blessing. I mean, it really is. It absolutely is. And that's what I want for you guys as well. So uh, our tradition here, for those of you who are new to the morning live stream, I say morning, it's morning to me. For some of you guys, it's the middle of the night. I know, and I appreciate you being, I appreciate you being here. But our tradition is you go into the live stream chat, share your name, where you're watching or listening from, and then I'll do some shout outs here this morning. Let's see if I can get through all these. We got Rob in San Francisco. It's only 52 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. Phil in Tokyo, Brian in Tucson, Rob, how you doing? Derek, what's up in Kennewick? Greg in Asheville, North Carolina. Sean, good morning in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Rusty in the UP of Michigan. Scotty, Brookings, South Dakota. Hey, Maria in Central Texas. Aaron in Columbia, Missouri. Robert in Altoona. Jack in Phoenix. Bill in Idaho. Denise in Long Island. Viv in Newark, recovering from COVID. Oh, Viv, I wish you a speedy recovery. Susan, good morning to you in Stillwater. Wayne in the Olympic Mountains, swaddled in fog. Melissa in San Diego. We got Dave in the Big Apple. What's up, Dave? Max, hey, what's going on in St. Louis? Lemuel, good morning from Fort Wayne. Stay sane in your padded cell. My kids call my booth the coffin. (laughs) Yeah, it can can feel that way sometimes. I like to think of it more as a cocoon. I actually feel very safe and it's very um, cozy in here. Ty, how are you doing in Warsaw, Indiana? John in Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, Megan, good morning, Bill and friends from Chile, Manitoba, Canada. Good morning, Megan. Sandra says, good morning from Worthington, Ohio. Just set up a condenser mic. What a difference in quality. All right, uh, Sandra, moving forward. I love it. Making things better. Bob, it's Magic Bob in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Good morning, Gene. Dallas, Fort Worth. We got Robert in Mobile, Alabama. Um, we've got, so let's see here, Janesville, Wisconsin in the house, sending you good vibes of Michigan cherry through your home reconstruction. I hope you get that. You know, Michigan cherry coffee is my favorite. Yesterday, uh, they wrapped up a lot of the major work in the kitchen and uh, all the, the sheet plastic came down. We could actually get entrance into our, into our um, kitchen again, and we were able to set up the little Keurig well, now I don't have Michigan cherry and Keurig. We usually grind our own beans, and I haven't got we don't we haven't found that coffee pot yet. But I was able to just to brew some caribou coffee from a K cup this morning. So, at least you know it's enough to get me keep me moving forward. That's that's all we care about right now. Just keep moving forward. Top of the morning to you, Mike in Spanish Fort, Alabama. Sandra, Dallas, Fort Worth. Terry, in Falston, Maryland. This morning's information is G O L D. He says, "Keep it going." 
Ty, if you're on here looking for a coach, you can't go wrong with Bill. He has saved me so much money and grief. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, Denise uh, agrees with Ty Moore. Okay, well, there you go. James, an overly expensive mic can actually make production values worse. That's the truth, James. If they're picking up too much noise from environmental from the environment, I wouldn't spend more than 180 bucks for a beginner mic. Sometimes less than 100. Yeah, that's the you know the thing that a lot of people don't realize. And James brings up a really good point: is you put a really good microphone, like you take this thousand dollar Neumann. It's not the most expensive mic you can get, but it's expensive enough. Everything. So what what helps to make this microphone good? also can make it dangerous for those who are working in an environment that's not super, super, super quiet and super, super, super well treated because this will pick up everything. So be careful with all that. Uh, Let's see here. AG in India. Hey, AG. Corey in Whitehall, Wisconsin. Uh, The VO blueprint is my guide to the VO unknown. Bill will guide you through the process, says Dave in New York. Thank you, Dave, for the kind word. I appreciate that. Uh, these these are unpaid, uh, unsolicited comments, by the way. Believe it or not, James, the built-in mic on my Fire tablet rocks just as good as my $170 mic. End result is the same after processing. Isn't that crazy? I mean, the technology today is amazing. We got Blair in sunny Portland, Oregon. James in Lafayette, Indiana. Wally says, thank you for making this uh, clear to us. You're welcome, Wally. Professor Tracy, what's going on in Rochester, Minnesota? Peggy in Phoenix, hello, getting cool, finally. And, and I'm, I'm sure you guys really look forward to that. I, I've only been to Phoenix a couple of times, but in those few times, I've, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. It is hot. I know it's a dry heat, but still, it is, man, it's, it, it'll fry you. Um, Nick in New York, always look, look forward to the morning sessions. Thank you, Nick. Joe says, hello from Sioux Falls, Robert in Wichita Falls, Texas. How many Roberts are in here? (laughs) A lot. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. Mike in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Claire, good morning to you in chilly Prescott, Arizona. Cynthia in Hollywood, Florida. Hot there, she says. I bet. Chip at Sherwood, Oregon. Susan, thanks for all the encouraging words and wisdom you share. As soon as I can, via Blueprint and demo with you. But your book is awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. And by the way, I do have a link to my book below in the description, too, for those of you guys who don't have it, if you want that, along with the companion audiobook that I narrate myself. Believe it or not, yeah, I actually recorded my own audiobook. Good morning, Chris. Uh, from 30,000 feet... On a flight from Seattle to Dallas, neat coffee stat. Yeah, get that man some coffee, would you? Uh, DJ Milton Keynes. It's oh Peter Jones. Hey Peter, what's up? Yeah, thanks for for checking in today. Susan, I recently upgraded to a fee fine, and it has made a huge difference. Awesome. Rob says hello from Bob Evans again. Bob, I mean, hey, if you're gonna be some, I mean, Rob, if you're gonna be some. Play- a mix of Bob Evans and Rob Ryder. Rob, if you're going to be someplace in the morning, I, you know Bob Evans would certainly rank very high. That's one of the things I miss about about living in Cincinnati, because I love me some Bob Evans. I'll, okay, quick story, and then I'll move on. I'll never forget the first time I ate at Bob Evans. And if I've if I've told you the story before, you know, tell me to move on. I played tennis my freshman year of college. I retired after that, but. I wanted to got burnt out on some stuff, but I really I wanted really wanted to play tennis, love tennis, and and I played my freshman year, and um, and uh, my coach, uh, you know, we were getting ready to we were getting ready to play a match against Rio Grande College, which is in northern Ohio, and um, my coach was telling us that's where the original Bob Evans restaurant was at, because that's where the Bob Evans farm. For those of you who don't know, Bob Evans Bob Evans is like a big brand here in the Midwest. Uh, you know, selling like sausage and eventually opened up their own restaurant, a chain of restaurants. And the, the original one exists there like on the farm or by the farm in Rio Grande, Ohio. And my uh, coach had talked to us about how amazing the biscuits were, the best biscuits he'd ever had. And so, of course, we were salivating by the time we got to our match because he said we're, we were going to go to Bob Evans after the match. We did. He wasn't lying. Boy, those, uh, I think that the biscuits have shrunk in the years since then, this is like 1978, but man, it was amazing. Made a, made a big impression on this young man, that's for sure. 
Hey, Jim, in Bismarck, North uh, Dakota, Thomas just ordered the book. Fantastic. Thank you, Thomas. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. I, you know, I really appreciate it. And again, I wish I could I could do the whole how to. But again, that's like that's like a two full day workshop. And that just, you know, covers the basic stuff. But I wanted to at least give you, again, the roadmap so you know what we're talking about here. And uh, remember, if you guys want to bring me out, to, you know, bring me over to, to Europe and sponsor something and let me know. We'll do it. We'll do a big, have a big shindig event out there um, as well. Maybe we'll do something again here in the U.S. I've done a, quite a few here in the U.S. Maybe it's time for another one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll talk about that. But thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Check out the links below. Again, I've got several links to my training resources, including my, my latest book, um, the voiceover blueprint, I think one or two other things in there as well. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.